In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the front view and top view and create the right side view. Now, there are some things that we probably ought to identify here. For example, the front view on this object could technically have a center line that runs through the entire object like this. However, because there is a cylindrical feature and a hole as well that runs through the cylindrical feature, I'd probably draw the center line more like this through the entire object. And the reason being is that one, the object itself is symmetrical left to right in this view. And right here, I want to be able to have a short, just like I did here, long, short, long, and a long, short, long, so that I can cross that to make a center mark for the center of this hole and cylindrical feature. So, long, short, long, to give me the center mark. And the same could be said about the top. It also has a symmetrical quality to it. As I move from left to right, it could be argued that the center for the cylindrical feature up here on the top would have to have a center mark and for the entire object itself. They also do not project any of their holes. This would have projection here of a hidden line to represent the right edge of the hole through this cylindrical feature and then here for the left edge of the hole. And the same could be said about the holes and the centers for these, but down on the front view. So I'll line up like this. This one I can carry on down from what I did before, as they seem to line up as well. Same with this. And now for this one. So down here, they would be hidden. And this point is actually the center of those holes, so here and here. And I can project those down to get the center. And you'll notice it also lines up with this edge on the front. So I think it's important to point out that they have forgotten to put that in on the activity so that you can go back and put in these missing edges and center lines and marks. All right, so once that's done, I can really start to get into how we should see the right side view. Now, just to not confuse you too much, I'm going to erase right here as I'll need that spot to be able to project over and down. And then you'll see that on this front view, I'm gonna wind up with some lines that cross over to the right side view. And it could be a little confusing if I don't get rid of a few lines. So although we don't like to erase the projection lines, the construction lines, I'm going to, in this case, just to help illustrate what I'm doing. <clears throat> All right, so now the next thing to do would be to take the back edge, 
the top view and project it over far enough that it passes this point on the right side. I'm going to go right through the isometric with this. And it's important to note that the isometric serves no purpose in this next few steps that I'm going to take. I should never project from the isometric. Let me state that one more time. I should never project from the isometric. It is simply going to be in the way for what I'm about to do. Now because I have the front and the back of the top projected over, I need the front and the back of the right projected up. Lucky for us, they provide us with the corners on the bottom front and top front. So I'll connect those together and when I do, I'm going to carry them all the way up until they cross through at least the front edge of the top that's projected over. But I'm partial to carrying it all the way through like so. And I'll explain why in a minute. I'll do the same with the back. And it makes a square. Now that square is very, very important. A square has a 90 degree angle at all four corners. But if I go from corner to opposite corner, I'll create a 45 degree line because I will split that 90 degree angle right in half. Now that 45 degree line comes into play when I want to project any features like this one, the back of the hole, the center of the hole, the front of the hole that lie in the middle of the top view and I need to project them over and down. Well that over and down movement requires that I have a 45 degree line to keep things parallel with the back and front edge. You see as I project this over I'll then be able to turn and project it straight down keeping the distance from this edge to the back the same as from where I project the line into the right side view we'll say it's roughly right about here, to the back. Those two distances need to be the same as they represent the same feature and the same dimension for that feature. All right. <clears throat> so let's do that next. I'll project this edge over until it runs into my 45 degree line. Because this is printed in black and white, that might be kind of hard to see on the video, but it is right there. And then I project it down. <clears throat> In this case, I'm going to turn this upside down for you all so that I can use my, protract my protractor's marking to make sure that I'm drawing this vertical and parallel. All right, so it is parallel to the back edge and what I believe to be vertical. And I'll repeat this process for the back, the center, and the front of that hole. So now I have all these vertical lines on the right side. And that's not bad. It might be a little confusing to some people at first, but it will help me with identifying the depth placements for each of the features that I need in the right side view. So now what I'm going to do is rotate my paper, project from the top of the circle. I'm using my protractor and these points to make sure that this is going to be a horizontal line and the bottom as well. Now I want to project over any feature as I move up in height or down in height that would be um, setting my height on the right side view. So like for example, this edge, there's something different. I run into the end of this rectangle. Uh, I wouldn't need one for here because this curve happens in the width and height direction, not in the depth and height direction. So I won't see that over here. What I will find is that this curve, this circle, I need to know the bottom and the top of it. I also need to know where this bottom 
and top art and the center that they share. And at the same time that I project the center, I'm going to project this point, which is where this edge ends. And there's something very special about that edge ending where it does. So I'll project this line over, trying to keep it as parallel as possible. Now you'll find that with your straight edges, you have a tendency to think that you're drawing a straight line, but then once you project it out, it's not exactly horizontal. It's a straight line, but not horizontal. It's not necessarily parallel to the bottom. It's very close, but not quite. So be sure that you rotate your paper, and if you're using a protractor, you can help make sure by using an edge and this little marker that you are truly drawing a horizontal line. Let's see if this makes my mark any better. It comes out just a little bit better, a little bit lower. It's really hard to tell, but there is a difference, a separation in those two lines. Ever so slight, but it is there. All right. And then I would continue this process in the most comfortable way, getting the bottom, bottom, center, top, and top. Okay, so once I finish this, I now need to go in and start delineating where my features actually are. Sure doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do that very easily. This is where understanding the relationship between one edge to another comes in handy. Like, for example, this edge of the cylinder right here lies at the same place as the center of this hole. This edge represents this feature as it goes from this feature up to the cylindrical feature. So I won't see it change in width because the right side only has height and depth. But I do know where it is, it's here. And I do know that it starts not all the way down here, but rather from this line right here. And it ends here. So I would delineate that line all the way up to this center point. So you'll find now that I've finished creating the delineation for all of my height lines, the back edge, the front edge of this feature, the front edge of the cylindrical feature, the center of the holes down here at the bottom, the back and front edge of those holes, and the front edge of the base Although we don't see a hard edge there and it does curve, we would see it represented as an edge because it curves in the width, or excuse me, it curves in the um, depth direction. We would not see that curvature represented as anything other than the height because we're seeing here the height. In this curvature, we see the width, but this curvature, we don't see it here going back in depth just like we won't see it here curve back in depth. And that's because up here in the top, we see that curvature in depth because the other part of its curvature is also in the width direction. It curves back and to the right as well. We don't see that here because we only see height and depth. I'll go on now to delineate the rest of those lines. All right, so I've rotated my paper and I have created some line work that's delineated for the width, but you'll notice that I've left a few edges not delineated, so I can talk about them specifically. For example, this edge. If we look in the isometric, we see that it goes from the front all the way to the back, so it'll go from this point all the way back here. It doesn't stop short right there, whereas this edge does not go all the way down to the bottom. We don't see it here, so we don't draw it. This edge will go from here to there. That's the bottom of the cylinder, and it stops short there. Even though this line comes up to the center, this one does not go through this vertical feature. It stops short. I've drawn in the hidden and center for this hole, which we can assume at this point goes all the way through the object, as we're not seeing any lines to tell us otherwise, and since they didn't provide it here. Okay, so now I've completed all of the delineations hidden in center lines for this object, and it should look something very similar to this.